In this video, we're going to look at voltage and current sources. In our previous videos, we looked at some circuit elements like resistors, and we said resistors were passive devices. They only absorb power. They only absorb energy. They take that energy and make heat out of it. Well, we also know that that energy has to come from somewhere. Well, voltage and current sources are the place that uh, circuit elements that we have that provide energy to our our circuits and that's where the energy comes from for our resistors. We'll see as we go forward that voltage and current sources don't always all voltage and current sources don't always prov provide power. Some of them actually can absorb power as well, but they are the sources of energy for our resistors. So to get started, let's look at the two two circuit elements in turn. The first one is the voltage source voltage source. Now before we get started, I, uh, we're going to look at uh, a graphical representation of how we can talk about the behavior of a circuit element. And we have that on here on the right. On the right hand side of the slide is this graph which we call an IV characteristic. It's an, it, it shows us, it allows us to plot relationship between voltage and current. Now these voltages and currents is the voltage is the voltage across a circuit element and then the current is the current which flows through it. So in this case we have the, the red current and the red voltage and if we were to plot the relationship between what current does as a function of this voltage or vice versa what the voltage does as a function of the current then we'd have the IV characteristic and it would be represented by some kind of curve on this on this graph. So the IV characteristic is something that we use quite a bit. We use it a lot in the later more advanced electronics because the circuit elements have very complicated behavior and it's easier to draw their behavior than to write lots and lots of equations for them. So let's talk about the ideal voltage source. So the circuit symbol for an ideal voltage source is on the left hand side. Now what is a voltage source? A voltage source is a circuit element which maintains a specified voltage across it and we see that this is a voltage source and it's going to maintain a voltage across it and it's going to do that regardless regardless of the current that flows through it. So no matter how much current I source flows through this voltage source it's going to maintain its voltage. So in this particular example we see that it is a 5 voltage source. It's going to be 5 volts across the voltage source regardless of the current that flows through it. So the IV characteristic for a voltage source is going to be a vertical straight line and in this case this vertical straight line is going to be at the 5 volt point and so we see we have 5 volts across this voltage source regardless of the current I source which flows through it. So as an example we can say well, well we have the 5 volt voltage source and somebody is doing something to the source such that there is a current let's say 2 amps are fl is flowing through the 5 volt source. If 2 amps is flowing through the 5 volt source what's the voltage of the 5 volt source? It's 5 volts. Well what if someone changes that current and that current that now flows through here is negative 100, 100 amps. What is the voltage across the 5 volt source? Well it's going to be 5 volts. So no matter what current flows through the voltage source, we know the voltage across it. In this case it's 5 volts. An ideal voltage source maintains a specified voltage across it regardless of the current flowing through it. What this means is to us is that for voltage sources we always know its voltage in this case 5 volts. We know nothing about the current of a voltage source because this 5 volt source can have any current flowing through it, it's still very happy and produces its 5 volts. There is no relationship between the voltage of a voltage source and its current. That means we don't know the current of a voltage source until we go and look at the rest of the circuit. Is there going to be current flowing through this voltage source? Well, if it's connected to other things, more yes, more than likely it is. What is the value of that current? Well, we have to solve the rest of the circuit using KVL, KCL, Ohm's law, and all the things we've been learning in order to figure out what that value is. Well, let's look at the dual of the voltage source, and that is the current source. An ideal current source, an ideal current source maintains a specified current, and we see this is a current source. It maintains a specified current flowing through it regardless of a voltage which is across it. So no matter what voltage is placed across this current source, this particular current source is going to maintain 2 amperes flowing through it. So we'll see that the IV characteristic for an ion source is also a straight line. In this case it's a horizontal line and the value of this volt, uh, current source 2 milliamps.
So also as before, no matter what voltage, if we have a million, positive million volts across this current source, it's going to have two milliamps flowing through it. And if we happen to have negative 10 volts across it, we still have two milliamps. I know the current, it's two milliamps. I have no idea what the voltage across the voltage, the current source is. I have no idea what this voltage is until I solve the rest of the circuit and figure out what it must be in order to satisfy all the laws. Now as we go forth, I do want to point out that everything in that we've been learning are really idealized uh, cases. These are ideal elements. They really, really don't exist in life. And so let's, let's kind of explain why kind of quickly. Here on the left is another voltage source. This is actually a, another representation of a voltage source. You'll see this one quite a bit. It's, it's, it's exactly equivalent to the one that we just looked at, which had this form. All right, so these two voltage sources are exactly the same thing. This is just drawn a bit differently. And what you have to remember from these is, is that the long line is actually the plus, the, the positive, the, the plus polarity marking. The short line is the, the minus polarity marking. And so the, these are, this is another way of writing uh, a voltage source. Uh, we use this representation here. Typically, when we're talking about constant or, or, or DC voltage sources or batteries, and, and, but they're exactly the same thing. They are really truly interchangeable. All right, so let's look at this voltage source and why it doesn't really, really exist. Why voltage ideal sources don't exist. So again, the IV characteristic for a five volt voltage source. We have five volts. All right, five volts is across this guy, no matter what current flows through it. So if this were the case, if we really could get this straight line that's vertical and extends to infinity in both directions, then let's examine this case. What is the voltage across the 5 volt source, the answer is 5 volts, Re if we have happen to have let's say an infinite number, if the current flowing through this guy were infinity. So if there's infinite current flowing through the 5 volt source, what's the voltage? Well it's 5 volts. All right. Well the problem with that is, is let's look at the power absorbed in this case. We have a current of infinite amps and that current is directed into the positive terminal, so we have the passive sign convention, and so the power absorbed is going to be infinity times 5. And when you do this, of course, you're going to get an infinite amount of watts. So what you have in this scenario is that this 5 volt voltage source is really absorbing, somebody's pumping in infinite joules per second into it, and it's, sh and it's just soaking it up and absorbing it. This guy's absorbing infinite joules per second. Well, I mean, obviously having infinite joules is a bad thing. Infinite energy would be just, you know, it's something we can't even really fathom, and absorbing infinite energy would just be, you know, it's, it's just mind-boggling. Well, this guy in absorbs infinite energy every second, and so not only does it absorb infinite energy, it does it all, it does it over and over and over again. So if you were to actually have this scenario of an infinite current that's flowing down into a voltage source that is maintaining its 5 volts, it's going to absorb infinite power. This becomes the mother of all black holes. Likewise, we can go to the um, ideal current source, and with the same argument, we can see that an ideal current source can't exist either, because in this case, we'd have a VI characteristic. If it truly existed, if it really did exist, it would look like this, 2 milliamps. And that would, of course, exist even if we had an infinite voltage. So we have 2 milliamps flowing, but somehow we have an infinite voltage across this guy. It's still going to have 2 milliamps. Same argument as before. What is the power absorbed in this case? Well, we have 2 milliamps, and then we have an, uh, an infinite voltage. And, of course, we then end up with infinite power once again. And so we really can't have these guys. So there's a couple of nuances that we need to throw on here. The, there's some actually other voltage sources, and they are called controlled sources. And, and we really don't treat them differently they just make the math a little bit more complicated. So in this case, we have voltage sources. And so we know that this is a voltage source. We see the plus and minus polarity marking, so we know that we have a voltage source. But in the previous case, the, the voltage source was a constant. You know, it was like 5 volts. But now the voltage that is across this guy is a function of a voltage VA. 
And so if we were to draw the IV characteristic, it's a voltage source, so we know it's going to be a, a vertical straight line. And the value of this voltage source is going to be based on some voltage VA, which is defined somewhere else in the circuit. So instead of having a constant value, if the v voltage VA elsewhere in the circuit, if the voltage VA elsewhere in the circuit were to change, then the value of the voltage across this voltage source would change. So this is a voltage source but it's controlled by a voltage somewhere else. Well, similarly, we can have a current control voltage source. We know it's a voltage source because of the plus and minus polarity symbols that we have inside the symbol. But in this case, we see that it is a current controlled voltage source because the value of this voltage, the value of the voltage is determined by a current somewhere else in the circuit. So in this example, we also know that we have a voltage source, so it's a vertical straight line, and the value of the green current, excuse me, the value of the green voltage is going to be 2IL, where IL is the current that's been specified somewhere else in the circuit. We don't really treat them any differently, it's just that the, the values of the voltages and the controlled sources are no longer constants, they depend on quantities somewhere else in the circuit. Likewise, we can have controlled current sources. We know these are current sources because of the circuit symbol contains uh, an arrow in it, but in this case we have a, a current source that is voltage controlled. And I know it's voltage controlled because the value is based on a voltage somewhere else in the circuit. So it is, since it is a current source, I know that the IV characteristic is going to be a, a horizontal straight line going off into infinity, and the value of this guy will be 4VL. It's still a current source, it just happens to have a value which is dependent on a voltage V sub L. What's well, V sub L? What's well, some voltage somewhere in the circuit that someone has specified as of interest to us. Also we have Another current source, this current, we know it's a current source because, again, the arrow and the circuit schematic symbol, but in this case I know that it is a current controlled current source because the quantity of current which flows is based on a current somewhere. So again, it's going to be a horizontal line that extends to infinity, but I know the value of this current is going to be negative 2 I3, while I3 is some current elsewhere in the circuit. Let's take these and put them to an example. Let's do an example. So here we have a bunch of voltage sources and, a, and then a current source, and they're all connected. So let's figure out, in this case, we were asked to figure out what is the value V sub L, which is the voltage across the current source. Remember, this is a current source, and we know the current, the current flowing in the current source, of course, is going to be 2 milliamps. and, and going to the left, what is the voltage across the current source? What's well, a current source? We don't know its voltage. That's why we have to figure out what it is. So let's write KVL for this particular circuit. So I'll begin in the bottom left and go around clockwise. So we have minus 5, and then the first polarity symbol we come to here is a pl plus V sub L minus a minus 10, and then here's uh, one of the battery kind of symbols for a voltage source. Remember from it that, that this is the minus, the short line is the minus polarity marking, and then the long line is the plus polarity marking. So we get in this case minus a plus 8, and then we come to a plus minus 10, and we're back where we started from, and that equals 0. So we take those and combine them together. And when you combine all those together and solve for VL, you figure that VL ends up, you discover VL ends up being a positive 13 volts. So VL is a positive 13 volts. And so now we know the voltage V sub L, the voltage V sub L ends up being a positive 13 volts. That's the voltage across the current source, the 2 milliamp current source. So we know that we have two negative we have two milliamps flowing through the current source. We now know its voltage is also is 13 volts. All of the rest of these are voltage sources. We know what all their voltages are because they're they're voltage sources. And so we, we don't know anything about their current because they're voltage sources, but actually we know the current now because we see that the current 2 milliamps which flows through the current source must proceed around the circuit in this direction. And so we know that everybody's got a 2 milliamp current. Let's do another example.
And this is an example where we have a controlled source, and they work much the same way. Controlled sources are treated no differently than the, the, the sources which have constant values. It's just that the math gets a little bit messier. So here we have a controlled voltage source. It's a voltage source, and it's a voltage-controlled voltage source. And since it's a voltage-controlled voltage source, we must have VA must be defined for somewhere, because we have to know what VA is to compute the value of 3VA. Well, VA is defined for us right there, and so we're told what VA is. And so, let's get started. So, to, same as always, we're going to write KVL, uh, start in the bottom left, and proceed around clockwise. And here we see the little short symbol, which remember is the minus polarity marking. And so the first thing we have is minus a plus 5. And then the first polarity marking we come to is the minus. So we write it down. And then you write down whatever the voltage is. In that case it's going to be a plus 3 VA. Continuing on, minus a minus 10 plus a minus 3, minus a positive 8, and then here we are at the current source. We know the current flowing through the current source is 2 milliamps, but we don't know its voltage. It's a current source. We don't know its voltage, but we see that we've already been given, it's already been marked for us uh, a voltage V sub L plus to minus as drawn there on the diagram. And so we can simply use that, and we have minus V sub L equals zero. So here we look good. We have our single equation KVL. We have minus 5 plus, minus 3 VA plus 10 minus 3 minus 8 minus V sub L. And so we get, look like we're ready to go, but we have one equation and two unknowns, and we know that's not going to work. We need to have another relationship. So we've written KVL on the circuit, but we don't have still enough information to solve the problem. Well, so we need a second equation uh, arrived at a, in, a, in a different way that lets us get another equation, independent equation, so that we can solve for these two unknowns. Well, we see that the first unknown is V sub L. V sub L comes from the fact that this is a current source, and we're trying to figure out the voltage for a current source, so that doesn't help us. The, the other unknown and the one that's causing us the problem is the VA voltage. So we need to write an equation for VA and we can do that. So let's write an equation. Let's find what VA is. VA is right here. So let's write KVL around this closed path. Remember KVL says that the sum of the voltages around a closed path equals zero. So it can be any closed path and so we'll choose to do that closed path right there. And so we get plus VA minus a minus 10 plus a minus 3 minus a plus 8 and we're back where we started from and that equals 0. And so we got to this point we have two equations and two unknowns and we're ready to go and so we can just simply solve the second equation and we'll see that VA when we solve the second equation we get VA is plus 1 volt and then when we plug that into the first equation, we will find that VL equals a minus 12 volts. And so now you've seen how to deal with current sources and voltage sources. Your voltage source is a circuit element that maintains a specified voltage across it regardless of current flowing through it. A current source does the opposite. It maintains a current through it regardless of the voltage across it. And controlled sources are the exact same thing except for the numbers are just based on value somewhere else in the circuit. They still have to satisfy all the laws, KVL, KCL, and the passive sign convention that we've been looking at. So now we have circuit elements which can pro provide energy to our circuits and we're really ready to go and, and learn a lot and solve for anything that we need.